Remember your position as a Lord. But remember we have come to also worship the Lord of Lords. So we're not going to be distracted. Every intention of the enemy to cause distraction. We come against it right now. We come against worry. We come against lack. We come against ignorance. That knowledge will enter our soul. Wisdom will instruct us. Wisdom will lead us. In the name of Jesus. I give you one minute to just pray aloud in the Holy Ghost. Before we start praising God in songs. Shake him under Edify yourself in the spirit, building up yourself on your most holy faith. Build up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Build up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Pray like somebody who is intentional. Pray like somebody who wants to experience God anew, afresh. Pray like somebody who wants to receive revelation. Pray like somebody who is available for God to shed lights on the inside of them. Pray like somebody who is experiencing that conversion. Pray like somebody who is experiencing a divine exchange. Let morning be converted to festive praise. Let sadness be converted to joy in the presence of God. In the presence, His presence is not a feeling. His presence is a knowing. We come on the basis of the Word of God that can never fail. We come on the basis of the Word of God that can never change. God's thoughts for us are good. His thoughts for us would not change. To bring us to its expected end. So right now, the scripture says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers in high places. So take your position as one who is above, far above. No spirits apart from the spirit of God is allowed. To operate in this atmosphere, only the Holy Ghost, only the Holy Ghost, we are open only to His move. We are open only to the manifestation of the Spirit of Jesus. We are open to prophecy. We are open to the manifestation of the Spirit of Jesus. We are open to life eternal. We are open to change. We are open to transformation. We are flexible before the Lord. We are malleable in His hands. He is the potter. We are the clay. He is remolding us. He is making us into who He has called us to be. Receive tonight. Receive tonight. Receive tonight. Let the waters of the Spirit begin to flow out of your belly. Out of your belly flows rivers of living. You have two more minutes. Come on. She's copeneko panakuta la pakiataya. He's shekanda rabaten la kosi prekedele kos. She copakino loko pasana lekete. Begin to make this confession. Tell yourself tonight, my life will not remain the same. I will not remain the same. I'm moving from glory to glory. I'm moving from power to power. I'm moving from faith to faith. Today, I'm injected by the power of God. I'm experiencing intimacy with the Lord. I'm experiencing a fresh walk with the Lord. I'm moving forward in my relationship with Jesus. I'm moving forward in my relationship with Jesus. I speak hope tonight. 
to anyone who is in a situation where you feel like there's no solution. Tonight is your night. Answers have come. Answers have come. Answers have come. Say with me, when I ask, I receive. When I seek, I find. When I knock, the door is opened unto me. So tonight, I receive that which I've asked God for in accordance to his will. That which I've been seeking for, now I find in the name of Jesus. Every door that Jesus has opened, now I enter in the name of Jesus. Let that be your prayer right now. Come on. Shana de la Bako Sayada. No more limitations. No more barrier. No more limitation. No barrier. Stir your heart up as you prepare to worship the king. He is our father, but he is also our king. He is our Lord, but he is also our savior. He is God, but he is also our friend. Are you ready? Shanda da bako sena la basaya. So set eleva na to sana manokosa. Shane leva kosa na vela kosines. Glory to God. Come on. Don't stop, don't stop. Don't stop. Rana manaba kosi de de break off and de semen ene manaba da kos. La manaba open di katas de 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 bana bana na bada da bada. Come on, let your worship begin to rise to him. Ene ne me kosi ya na manaba da open de kona na bade kasa kasa. Let heaven hear your voice tonight. Ene ne mana kosi de de ne me no kopa. Ene katas de de ne ma kopa no. Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. We don't take your love for granted. We've come to say thank you. For you alone are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord. you alone are worthy to be adored. Thank you, Lord. you alone are our Father. Thank you, Lord. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let your worship begin to rise to him. Begin to wave those hands to Jesus. And begin to say thank you, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, and then the mock off and do sin and then ba 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 da da da. Come on, let it rise, let it rise to Him, let it rise to Him tonight. And then the man that calls the animal, and then the man that buys, they are no sin.
there's a stirring in this room and I sense that God is dealing with long-standing matters stubborn issues and I will give you two minutes to travel over that matter no matter what the matter is long-standing issues stubborn matters you begin to pray come on in this atmosphere you begin to pray pray like you know that you are coming out pray like you know that solution has come solution has come Pray, 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 come on. There's a stirring in this room. And you have to learn to take advantage of this kind of stirring. Once there's a surge of the Spirit. Once there's a manifestation of the presence of God. No matter what the mountain is. Scripture says, mountain, what did you see that made you skip like ram? Red Sea, what did you see that made you part? Jordan, what did you see that made you dry up? It was the presence of God. So no matter what that situation is, I give you one more minute to introduce it to Jehovah. Shanda la boss, and I hear the word Jehovah overdo. Sheko pasata la bande. Which means that no matter what request you bring tonight, in accordance to God's will, God is set to surpass your imagination. God is set to surpass what you can ask for. God is set to surpass it. God is set to surpass it. If you don't have prayers to pray, you can pray for me. And for somebody who came in with body pain, you can check your body right now. You came in with body pain, that pain is gone. You can check your body right now, that pain is gone. In the name of Jesus. Who is the person that came with body pain? You can lift your hands if you are in this room quickly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone in the name of Jesus. It's gone. And I never to return. In the name of Jesus. I saw a lady. Bring it down. And it felt like you were in a dream. And you were dragging something with somebody. You were dragging something. It looked like cloth, but I don't know if it was really cloth. But you were dragging something in the dream with somebody. I decree victory over you now. I decree victory over you right now. In the name of Jesus. Anything that you are contending with, you are coming on top. In the name of Jesus. You are coming on top in the name of Jesus. Things are turning around for your good. Long-standing situations have been dealt with. Stubborn situations have been dealt with by the presence of Jehovah. By the presence of Jehovah. Can somebody just lift their hands before the Lord and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That which was impossible that which you thought would take long answers have come now that which you took do, that you thought would take a while some of you are receiving answers good news in this week that we're coming into this next week you are receiving good news because the angels that have been assigned to you have now gone forth at the word of the lord that you have spoken this evening to make sure that things begin to align. Elisha said, this is going to sell for this price tomorrow. One of the officials said, even if God opened a window, it will not happen. In this coming week, I set before you 
by the anointing and the unction of God, you are going to be experiencing 24-hour miracles in the name of Jesus. Doors that you thought can never open. Somebody is experiencing a restored relationship. A restored relationship. And it has something to do with your... I, I, it's sounding like your former boss. Maybe you didn't leave the place well. God is restoring relationships. God is restoring relationships. Is restoring things. Receive restoration. Receive. Re if you are the one, say amen. Receive restoration. The years that the canker worm has eaten, the years that the locust has eaten, restored completely unto you. In the name of Jesus. Anybody who is sitting in for an exam in this season, favor is your portion. Anybody sitting in for an interview in this season, favor is your portion. Anybody that has put in for a job and you're waiting for a response, good news is what you will hear. In the name of Jesus. And if for any reason they say they're not taking, you know that something, God has prepared something bigger. Because it's still your month of massive things. It's still your month of great things. I sense a strong pull that God has brought somebody into abundance in this season. Abundance in this season. Abundance in this season. That the things you used to struggle with, you will not struggle with them anymore. In the name of Jesus. Somebody is entering into a fresh dimension of administration. 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 Oh, it's a grace that is coming upon you. And it's because you are in a season of expansion. Lift your hands before the Lord, everyone. Father, thank you because that person that your hand is coming upon for administration. Your oil comes upon the person right now in the name of Jesus. And that oil is poured out upon you right now in the name of Jesus. And what will happen is that relevant knowledge will become appealing to your soul. In the name of Jesus, it will cause you to grow like never before. In the name of Jesus. This year, somebody is going to be ten times better. Ten times more. In the name of Jesus. I hear the word establishment. God will establish you. God will establish you. God will establish you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of some of you have minus certain things from the things you thought that God would do this year. But I'm letting you know, put it back in your list. Put it back in your list. Put it back in your list. I, I'm seeing somebody who has cancelled something out of what they thought would happen this year. I'm letting you know, under this anointing, that it's going to come to pass. In the name, if you are the one, say a big amen. Say a bigger amen. Father, we offer our voice of thanksgiving unto you today. Because that which you have said will come to pass, we perform the counsel of your servants. That which you have spoken is what I have spoken. That which you have placed in my heart is what I have said with my mouth. Father, I thank you because you bring your word to come to pass in the life of your children and testimony upon testimony of your favor, of your loving kindness is what we experience in the name of Jesus. Let somebody's joy be full in the name of Jesus. Let your glory show forth in somebody's life. And let it be clear that you are the one who did it. Lord, do it in a way that nobody will be able to take glory for it. Do it in a way that men will sit and will say, Ha, this can only be God. In the name of Jesus. That will be the headline of your news. Shout, this can only be God. Shout it one more time. This can only be God. That's my testimony. Oh, put your hands together for the Lord and welcome somebody again to service this evening. Thank you, Jesus. It's another beautiful time of fellowship. Okay, so we'll just move on from where we stopped. Um, next week is Easter, so happy Easter in advance.
happy Easter. So, some of you are not happy for Easter. If it's Christmas, would you would have reacted differently. You could prefer the birth of Jesus to the resurrection. Yeah. Happy Easter in advance. Yeah. Okay, so we started this series switch and I'll be wrapping it up today because um, next week I'll, have to, I'll preach Easter message next week and then <laughs> next month for from next month for three months we're doing a series I call Uncommon Sense and it's a series on wisdom and it's a practical series on the wisdom of God and today I call this the force of wisdom under switch but I'm going to just do it's going to be a crash course but next month we're going to look at the subject of wisdom on a grand scale and it's going to take us a bit of time it might take us more up to three months for us to and we're going to be doing a lot of study on the book of Proverbs so that because I sense that things are about to move so quick in the next three months. And the people are going to enter into places that they might not be fully prepared for. And I mean good, good places. So we're going to have to move quick and embrace a realm of wisdom that is different from where we are coming from. Amen. Some of us will have to learn certain things and learn it really quick because of what God is about to bring us into. So let's pray. Father, as we get into your word, we ask that you breathe upon it. Teach us. Let mercy speak for us. Let it enter and dawn on our hearts. Let this light shine and grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation that we might have understanding in the name of Jesus. Can somebody say a big amen? Okay. So, we've looked at turning night to day and we've looked at different switches, the switch of Thanksgiving. We've also looked at Thanksgiving being the channel through which light enters into your spirit man. And last week we looked at open eyes, which means that it's not enough to just have light. You have to also see. And I mentioned last week that it's possible for you to have light in a room and you're still looking for something. So God has to open your eyes to see. So once you see, we have cases of people who have looked for their car keys. And by the time they found out, they found out that it's inside their fridge. <laughs> it was when they wanted to take water that day. It was like an exchange program. You took water and you... And <laughs> so it's important. And it's not because there was no light. There was light... But the person, you know, open eyes will help you locate. Then there's a third step. After you've seen what God is showing you, you have to know what to do with what God has shown you. Praise God. It's important to, to know how to use what. Because all of us sometimes have, are faced with similar challenges, open to almost similar opportunities, but only people who know how to maximize these opportunities will now make headway. It's possible to grow up with a friend when, like for 20 years, and you find out the way that your friend is, is different from where you are. And sometimes it's because of this subject that I'm about to start on that switch, but next month we're going to now look at it critically. So the next stage where you now come into a place where it's not just about finding what God has shown you, Knowing how to use what God has shown you is that you ask God for wisdom. Say wisdom. Say wisdom. Let me explain what it means to have wisdom. Pharaoh had a dream. Hmm? We can put that under the light category, which means that light came into Pharaoh's heart as a dream in the night. And Pharaoh saw, had that night vision and saw slim cows eating up large cows. He saw that one. He saw another one of large cows eating. You know, he saw different things. We can call that light. But what good did that 
do for Pharaoh. In short, Pharaoh was concerned because he didn't have the interpretation. So he had to go and look for somebody to give him interpretation. So we can put what Joseph first did in interpreting that dream as open eyes. So Joseph now had to tell him, oh, the skinny cows eating the, it means they're going, there's going to be farming. But what happened before means that there would be abundance for seven years and then there'll be farming for seven years. So we see the dream as light coming into a person's heart. We see the interpretation as what open eyes. So Joseph gave an explanation. But do you know that even with the two things that we have mentioned right now, it won't have changed the circumstance or it couldn't have changed the economy of Egypt. So it's even possible that God has brought you into a realm where you have started seeing. But there's an extra step that you need to go that would now convert that sight into something that can change your life. There are people who see and their lives are not changed. Because this next level where it's the dimension of wisdom, they have not come to a place where they are applying it. They have not come to a place where they have asked God for it. And what's that dimension of wisdom? So, you have the dream, you have the interpretation. So, what do we do with the interpretation? That was where Joseph's job now really showed. And he gave wisdom and says, this is what we're going to do. In the seven years where there is abundance, we're going to keep 20%. Are you listening? Then in the other seven years, the 20% that we have saved for seven years is going to help to cater for the next seven years. Without that instruction, Egypt would have been as poor as other nations because they won't know exactly. See, you think that it is natural, that information. is because you have read it. <laughs> it's because you have read it. That's why you know that, oh, this is how it played out. If you were just left with the dream alone and you're left with the interpretation, you might not even know what to do. It was very clear. Save 20%. And that might be somebody's instruction today. Save 20%. <laughs> In short, scripture tells us, don't worry, when we get into uncommon sense next month, which is it's, it's, I sincerely believe that God is about to change somebody's life. I sincerely believe that somebody is about to experience transformation like never before. You know, And it's going to come by practical steps that you can replicate. Are you getting what I'm saying? You, you can do what? Replicate it. Because one of the things that we lose out in our part of the world sometimes is that when we stumble on things, we don't sit down to conceptualize. We don't do what? We don't sit down to conceptualize, to say, this were the steps I took. And then you test it again to see if it can bring any results. And it's important. You have to start studying patterns in your life. You have to start studying things that, study things that stir you up to receiving from God. Elisha, I don't know how he found out that a sound, that sound could help him connect to the voice of God. Maybe he was passing by the market one day and they were playing music and he heard God. He said, ah, ah, so this part of what, and it was so clear. And we see that even in the prophetic lines, a lot of prophets depend on sound to what, to hear and perceive what God is saying. Especially in moments where, you know, they might not be in the right frame. They will use sound to configure. So that becomes a concept now. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the same thing in, in your life. You, should, you will find out certain patterns that are working. And wisdom is going to instruct us in this season. Say amen. So Joseph gave solution. That's what changed everything. The dream... They could have told everybody the dream. But those who did what Joseph said were the ones that enjoyed the benefits. Are you getting it? The same thing with the story of Noah. 
the information that it was going to rain came to everybody. First to Noah, Noah became the preacher of righteousness, praise God, and he was telling everybody. But it was only Noah that responded to wisdom. And wisdom said, go and build an ark. And sometimes as believers, when we hear rumor of famine and all of those things, what we do... <coughs> make sure it's not that same fly that has been disturbing me from the house. <laughs> See, sometimes when we hear the rumor of famine, what the average believer will do is going to go and bombard the gates of heaven and say, God, it will never happen. Let's we cancel it, we cancel it. Some things are sovereign. Some, some things are what? Sovereign. The flood was bound to happen. So the solution was not to pray it away. The solution was to what? Build that's the voice of wisdom coming to you. Build an ark. So even if Noah was not skilled at building an ark, he has to quickly learn, do a crash course on how to work with wood and all of that. And I'm telling you, some of you, you are hearing it clearly now that that skill that you said you wanted to learn since, that course that you wanted to do, go and do it. It's clear now. You know, I say, God, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm telling you now that that's what God is saying to you. <laughs> Debbie, you've heard that, B? Okay. It's time. Because that which will happen would happen, though. Are you getting it? But you can be prepared. Noah and his family, it took them a while, many years, to get that ark ready. And in that season, they would have been calling Noah madman. Because it had never rained. Never. So there are things that God is putting on your heart that has never happened yet on the earth. And whilst you are preparing for it, the people around you might not even understand it. But wisdom is telling you, start that business now. It might look like there's no profit, but in the next 10 years, it might be the salvation of a nation. In the next 10 years, the government might need your help in that area to be able to deliver certain things. And the only way that you entered it was that you entered it 10 years before it happened. God is granting us foresight in this season. Yes, he's granting us foresight. That you will look at how your life changed and you will say, wisdom instructed me. Never forget, Jesus Christ has become our wisdom. He has become the power of God unto us. In our part of the world, sometimes we like to rely so much on the power of God alone. But thank God for revelation. And that is progressive. We'll see more. It's important that we embrace the wisdom of God. The how of getting things done. The what? The how. And for those of you who know me, you know that... I love the supernatural. But let's not forget the application of wisdom is also supernatural. That's part of the expression of God. Hallelujah. I have a fan in my house that is a testimony of the supernatural. The fan got spoiled. It's the fan in my room. It's a miraculous fan. Yes. Because the fan was not working. I was not working for a while. You know, see, all of us who have had cases of fun that are spoiled, you have steps that you take. You put the fan on. <laughs> and you hope that it will come on. So I had done that with that fan. And it didn't come on. I've done it at different times, maybe like two or three times. But on this particular day, I entered the room and, it, and I was feeling so hot. And a knowing on the inside, it was like the Holy Ghost was telling me, go and put on the fan. I know that this fan is not working. And I put on the fan and the fan started working. 
And even if other fans are having problem in the house, that particular one is not having problem. It's still working. But we have had cases where we had to call Mr. John to come and fix fan. Let me tell you, life is a balance between power and wisdom. In the same house, we have a fan who is that is working by devil is a liar. He will say the truth. Uh -uh. So what happened? Check, check. We are watching you. <laughs> In the same house, we have a fan that started working by power. We have another fan that God put that started working by wisdom. And it's important, even when it comes to the area of healing, we have to make sure that we are not callous and we are not irresponsible. The fact that we lay hands on the sick and people get well does not discredit medicine. Are you getting what I'm saying? Does not what? Discredit me. I heard of a, a case of a, a woman who was in labor. I mean, we heard it yesterday. Was it yesterday? And then they said she was going to, that there, was, there were some complications and she needed to do surgery and she said she, she was going to a pastor. Then she went to church. And she died in church. Yes, died. Died. We, we have, we have, it's, it's important that we understand the balance of these things. Are you getting what I'm saying? We, you get it. Even on medication, they put, if symptoms persist. <laughs> <laughs> Even on medication, if symptoms persist, see, yes. Which you are not even supposed to take medication without a doctor's prescription. We know we call it medical practice, but it's an expression of the wisdom of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even in the life of Jesus, did you notice that they were not always multiplying loaf and fish? <laughs> we have record of twice that that was done. We have record of two. We have record of maybe once or twice where Jesus walked on water. The other one is in the boat with them. If it was going to take four hours, it would take four hours. In scripture, we have a record of um, Philip disappearing and appearing once. It didn't happen to Peter. It didn't happen, happen to Paul. It didn't happen to any of the disciples. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it's important that we start to have balance. It's like somebody asking you which one is more important, to inhale or to exhale. So, the power of God is as important as the wisdom of God. Praise God. It's extremely important. We can, by laying on, by laying on of hands, get somebody who, is, who was diagnosed with cancer. What? Person gets healed. But let me ask you a question. Will it be good if there was a cure? It will be good. Because some people didn't get the, get the opportunity to, for hands to be laid on them. And what they had access to was medical science. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it has to be a win-win situation. It has to be a win-win situation. The person is sick. The person cannot make confession. And there's medication that will make the person be able to talk. <laughs> Let's get you to that point. Are you getting what I'm saying? And it's important that people who stand in my type of office, we say it. So that you don't think that it's only... It's important that we mention it. 
so that you don't say, yeah, I will not go for medical checkup. I know this is, our pastor have said, I did not see anything. To say. <laughs> At least if you go for medical checkup, you will know what your prayer point should be. If there should be any. Or if you sustenance prayer point, or you're attacking something, you, you will know. It's the blood. In short, when, even when people get healed, a medical practitioner has to confirm that it was really so. You remember the case of the lady I mentioned that had that tumor in her spine? They still had to open her up. And when they opened her up, what they found out that was that that tumor left her spine and was just lying fallow, con- con- not connected to anything. So God had already, but they saw that that was what happened and they just removed the tumor. Who knows if after, if they didn't, if she just left and didn't do medical check, if maybe after many years, that tumor will reconnect to something. God forbid. I, are you getting what I'm saying? So sometimes these things have to be due diligence. I, I, I remember as our first son, Larry, was not, I don't know why I'm talking about this. Maybe somebody is, is about to go into error in that line and I'm hammering it now. So that when you marry, when your husband says, have you given medication to that child that is not feeling fine? You will not say, no, we have been praying. <laughs> Madam, do what you're supposed to do. You can be praying. Even doctors tell you that it's God that heals. <laughs> you know, and I remember clearly, Larry was not feeling fine. We had to take him to the hospital. It was really, it, it was an emergency. We had to take him to the hospital that morning and we knew that the battle has been sorted out. That that day was the day of the, the day for Ashanti. And we knew. But we made sure we stayed. You could you could say you want this, you want the child, your child to be discharged. No, we made sure that all the tests that the doctors needed to do to certify that he was fully discharged, they we took we made sure that everything was done. Which, which will mean you have to stay extra days to make sure that that's what we have to. It, it took what? 14 days. And we had to make sure that all those things were sorted out. Praise God. So wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is what? And as a people, I believe that God is calling us to grow in wisdom. To grow in wisdom. And wisdom can be learned. Earthly wisdom can be learned. Heavenly wisdom, the Holy Ghost is in charge of that. But it's important that we grow in earthly what? Wisdom also. Natural wisdom. The how of things. Without wisdom, the person who found out that beans could be used for akara. That's wisdom, which means that this same thing can take this form. And then you find out that, oh, that same beans can be used for what again? Moi, moi. Then who was the person who found out that we could even boil what came out from the bum bum of a, of N? What am I saying? There are things that need to, need to be discovered. There are forms in which things exist right now that can have multiple forms. That it's by wisdom that we will know. Your salary can take another form that can make it multiply. Are you getting what I'm saying? That same 5K can take a form where that 5K is producing by itself. By wisdom. You can make your first one million era this year and that can be the beginning of abundance in your generation. And others who had 50 million, they came back and became broke.
So, prophecies have come to give us headlines about 2024. But I believe it's time to receive instructions on what to do in these critical times that we live in. Every problem is a wisdom problem. Let's say that together. Every problem is what? It's a wisdom problem. If you know what to do, you won't label it a problem. You won't what? You won't label it a problem. It's, it will cease to exist when wisdom comes. Because you now know what to do. Somebody sings a song that you have never heard before. Somebody somewhere can accompany it. Somebody else can't. Do you know the difference? Practical wisdom. And if that person who couldn't is taking through certain knowledge or giving certain information, after a while they will be able to do the same thing. And I dare to let you know that the things that you cannot do now, if you go for the required knowledge in the nearest future, you'll be able to do those things. There was a time you couldn't read or write. Yes. And it was the ministry of a teacher that took you from that place of ignorance into the place. And let me let you know, the job of a pastor is also to give people knowledge. So that they can move from a place of ignorance, come into a place of knowledge. And knowledge is the raw material that wisdom works with. Knowledge is the what? It's the raw material that wisdom works with. Once there's knowledge, then wisdom says, I have something to work with. So, wisdom finds it easier to operate in a heart that is informed. So, in this year, we have to make a deliberate effort to love knowledge. To, we have to love knowledge. And that's why the truth is we might have to reduce the amount of time we spend receiving too much knowledge and go for specific knowledge. Are you getting what I'm saying? You have to reduce because everything is filling up a space so and some people are in a state where they have to experience clean up. The information is too much. Now they are confused. Because the information is what? Too much. The disciples were disciples of Jesus. They were not disciples of the Pharisees. They were listening consistently and getting the right information. When it was time, where the substance of that thing came, where did Peter get that scripture from Joel to that this is what was prophesied by Joel. was it that the Holy Ghost just gave him that scripture he had been reading scripture which means that the times that Jesus will go and read the scroll the disciples too will follow him to go and read the scroll hallelujah if the word of God became flesh and he had to study you, the adopted word, you should also study. Let me, let me put it this way. See, you can't only live effectively on the earth based on only, you can't live effectively on the earth if you're only feeding on spiritual information have to also we're talking putting on this check I found the way wisdom you switch it off you switch it on it will continue as long as it's green it's not red if it's red it means it's battery it's, pr it's practical check check it's not battery. It was it's green though. Check, check, check. 
will troubleshoot. Now at least we know that that means it's the transmitter. Where did I stop? Yeah, we can't just feed on spiritual information alone. Which means that the Bible should not be the only book you read. So the Bible should not be the only book you read. And let me tell you why. The Bible is a document of history. Hmm? It's important that we get that. And it's a compilation of books. The Bible is a library. And people that were in the Bible days, they had things that they had to read. So the same thing with our times, you will understand scripture more if you interact with natural things too. Yes. If you see, in the, in, in the ministry of Jesus, for every time he wanted to relate spiritual truth to them, it was a physical parallel. The kingdom of God is like... So Jesus had information and knowledge about agriculture. A farmer sowing and all of that. He had information. Jesus had information about and knowledge about fishery or fishing. Jesus had information about acoustics. Jesus had knowledge about where to stay for 5,000 people to be able to hear what you are saying. So, he would have to stay on the higher part of the mountain or wheresoever so that the sound can be transmitted. So, these things are important things because it's not everything that you cast out a demon for. Oh. Somebody's experiencing deliverance already. Because deliverance is not only that you got slain in the spirit. Some people get slain and come up the same way. Because their mind has not changed. So you can make a decision Anything that's a need in your life right now, hmm? anything that's a need in your life, make a decision that you want to start getting information. In the multitude of counsel, there will be what? The safety. Wisdom is happy and comfortable in a heart that is informed. So, Oh, you have been praying for promotion. And you have not even found out how they get promoted in your office. What is written in the document. And this is the sixth month of your consistent vigil, 12 a.m. prayer. And every time a nudging will come on the inside, read the constitution of this company. You say, no, 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 God is on my case. Amen. There's a way to get things done. James 1. Let's quickly turn to it. And I've never started preaching. And we're almost done. Okay. Don't worry. Next month we're going to we're going to really stay on it. I call that series Uncommon Sense. It's going to be a practical study on the book of Proverbs. And things that God has placed in scriptures for us to follow. You know, there are generic things and there are specific things. Generic is that it's available. That the principles are common to all. 
the specific will now be to you in your particular situation. Okay, good. So James 1, 5 to 7, it says, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God. He puts an adjective in front to describe the way God is. If you need wisdom, ask our... He didn't say ask our God. Ask our generous God. And he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, he now puts a requirement. Be sure that your faith is in God alone. Be sure that your what? He said, do not waver. For a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Something entered into my heart because some of you, at least one of you, it came into your see, One of the things that the Holy Ghost does is that it would speak to my heart what somebody is thinking. Yes, somebody was just thinking, I have many books to read. How, how, how am I going to read all the books that I need to read? Who was the person? The person was thinking it. And I have answers for you. See, it was you. Okay, good. Yeah, you, you, see, you see how the Holy Ghost works. You just we, we call it the word of knowledge. Mm. Don't worry. Before the end of the year, God will, will ask God to give us permission to teach on the gifts of the Spirit. It's available to every believer. Amen. To every believer. And the instruction I have for you on what you should do is that you should be in the association of people who read. So what you need to do, if you have three books to read, get three friends. One, this one will be reading this one. This one will be reading this one. When you are done, make sure you are writing summary and the points so that I discuss what I've gotten from my own book. I give you summary, you give me summary. So in, in, in short, at the end, I would have gained summary of three books. Because what is in that second book? I, I might need it now. Are you getting what I'm saying? Wisdom now. Wisdom has to teach you. We used to do it in school. You read chapter 2. I'll read chapter 1. You read chapter 4. What did you read there? I'll tell you this. this, this uh, you read chapter 6. By the time you are 6 like that, you only needed to read one chapter, one chapter each. And you came to give your summation or your presentation to each other. You have learnt something. Hallelujah. So you have practical wisdom there on what to do. Okay. Then he says, do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a sea, as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Doubt must be a strong issue for Pastor James to say that if you, if you, if you waver, if you just doubt that God would give you answers and instruction, don't expect to receive anything from God. Do you know what happens? How you know that you are wavering? You're already looking for option B. You're already doing what? Yes. In short, every time you pray, as you're hoping that God will do it, you're already telling yourself, what if he doesn't? Then you're already looking for something else. He's saying, if you ask God for wisdom, God is generous. He will give you wisdom. He will do what? Give you wisdom. So three things that we have learned from that scripture. To receive wisdom, you have to be humble enough to accept that you need it. A person who would attract wisdom or can even come to the place where they say, God, I need wisdom, that person is humble. Part of the attributes of a of a person who is proud is that they can't ask people for help. And let me tell you the truth. Over what you don't know, ask for wisdom. Over what you think you know, ask for wisdom. It's like help. Over what you think you know, ask for help. Over what you think you don't know, ask for help. Which means that 
I will never come out of that status where I will need God to give me wisdom. Do you understand? I will always need God to give me wisdom. So every day, I'm open before God to say, the owner of wisdom, I need wisdom. I need what? Wisdom. Because I'm going to see many things today. I'm going to see opportunities today. I'm even going to see things I'm, that I'm familiar with. But when there's wisdom, I would know how to maximize everything. I would know how to maximize everything. There was a year, two or three. No, no, no. I can't remember when. We had a project to do. It was in October of that particular year. An album project. We needed to finish it in, in one month. Nobody finishes an album in one month. But that was the situation. The clients, they had a release date in mind. And we're just going to start. By wisdom, I knew what to do. And the wisdom that God borrowed me became a system that I started working with. And we were able to meet the timeline. We met it well. In short, I met somebody today who is from that particular church that came to record that particular project. So, ask God for wisdom. When you are under pressure, don't let the pressure stop you from praying. That's when you say, God, answer is with you. Show me. Answer is with you. With the resources available to me now, let me know what to do. Let me know what to do. It says God is generous. That is, is do you know what it means for, for, for scripture to say God is generous? It's like he's more willing to give than you are ready to ask. That all he was just waiting for was for you to ask. That when you not ask, you say, I, say, I was waiting for you to ask. That becomes a requirement for somebody to receive wisdom. And wisdom is massive. And the requirement to get it is just by asking. Tell your neighbor, wisdom is the principal thing. So as I round up, so what happens when you pray for wisdom? Because you have to be able to detect when wisdom shows up. It will show up as an opportunity. It will show up as what? That's one of the ways that it will show up. It will show up as an opportunity, but inside that opportunity is also temptation. So you have to be you have to be aware. Inside the opportunity is also what? Temptation. Okay. And I'll show you from scripture now. Ephesians 5, 15 to 16 says, So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. And what's the attribute there? Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. So to walk in the manifestation of wisdom, it will cause you to recognize and maximize opportunities. And these fully maximized opportunities would redeem time. It will redeem time. Which means that if you had lost something, if wisdom instructs you and you enter into it, you can gain what you, you have. You can gain in one transaction what you had lost for 10 years. It happened to Joseph. And we'll look at some of the opportunities laced with temptation. Nicely. So you have to be discerning when these opportunities come. So the first opportunity that's not the first, but one of the opportunities that Joseph got was the opportunity to serve in Potiphar's house. Hmm? See, how you interpret the event will determine what you get out of it. Joseph was in slavery, hmm? was a slave, but it was an opportunity, it was an opportunity for him to what? Serve. Hmm? So, if you look at it as an opportunity to serve, it will change your attitude. It will do what? It will change. You can say, oh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, they used me. It was because you were useful. It's only useful people that can be used. If you check that whilst they used you, you learned you were growing. And now, the job that you got, you got it because they used you. Can you see? It 
Amen. It was an opportunity to serve, but inside of that opportunity was Potiphar's wife. Temptation. So inside of every opportunity, there will also be that temptation. The opportunity comes, you are giving a 10 million naira contract to execute something. Inside of that opportunity is the temptation to be greedy. Is the temptation to be what? To be greedy. That you will use one million to do the job and you will not still do it well. And the truth of the matter is, wisdom is watching what you are using him to do. Because wisdom is a person. Jesus is wisdom. So every time you ask God for wisdom, what you get is a supply of the Spirit. A supply of the Spirit to lead. The Spirit of God is also called the Spirit of what? Wisdom. Hallelujah. And Scripture says in Proverbs 9, 10, fear, the fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. The knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. Which means that the knowledge of God results in what? Good judgment. This person has good judgment. What's behind it is that the person knows God. So what you define as knowing God is not that your tongue is loud. It will show in good judgment. It will show in how you decide what is fair and what's not fair. Do you understand? You just know this person has been working with you and has been doing uh -uh. the profit you made from this thing was, a, was 1M and not even 50K came to the person because the person is an intern. Wisdom is watching. Amen. The room is quiet now. What's happening? <laughs> the second opportunity was the opportunity to show love and be a solution provider through the use of his gifts. And the temptation that was there was the temptation to ignore other people's pain. It's a temptation. It was there. Joseph was in prison not because he did something wrong. So he should not even see anybody. So he, he got into prison again, another opportunity to serve. Another be, he had another opportunity to... So you see how these opportunities show. So once we, you pray for wisdom, you start to recognize opportunities. And they may not be like what others. I don't know, like I said, like I've said in service, I don't know how long Rebecca might have been praying for us band. But when the servant of Abraham showed up, an opportunity to serve showed up. Wisdom said, so you're going to give them. Even if you, I don't know if it was our first time of serving like that. So sometimes you come out of who you think you are. And have spirit-led temperament. You talk loudly before the Holy Spirit says, just talk softly. <laughs> you talk softly before it now says, shout. Then the person stand up, get out of my office. And you say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's no formula to the Christian work. It's as many as are led by the Spirit. Are you getting it? So this opportunity showed up. And the temptation to ignore people's pain was there. But he didn't fall for that. He took the opportunity. And we know that Joseph's, get, Joseph's entrance or entry into the palace was because of but it was not just a one-time event. You see the series of events that led to that final moment. So, if you're going to remember anything, remember that when the opportunities show up, they will also be eating temptations around them. Rise and let's pray. Pray a simple prayer. Father, open my eyes to the opportunities around me. Let wisdom instruct me in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for that right now. Because there may be opportunities around you that you have not seen. A department that is not working properly in your office. And you have told yourself, it's not my business. And the Holy Ghost may be telling you, John, do something about that thing. And offer your boss this suggestion. And in doing that, he says, oh, we don't even have HOD for that, for that department. Go and become HOD. And that's how your salary that you have been praying, three months prayer, 
That's how they increase the salary. Upon the eyes of my understanding. Open my eyes to see the opportunities around me. It might not be the comfortable thing to do. But wisdom will speak to you. Wisdom will speak to you. Then a second prayer. Say, Father, deliver me from temptation and distractions. In the name of Jesus, pray that prayer. Deliver me from temptations and distractions. Lift your hands before the Lord. Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. They will start to experience the benefits of wisdom. Wisdom will bring some of you into a place of international recognition. In the name of Jesus. Wisdom will keep you safe. Wisdom will teach you what you should do. For somebody under the sound of my voice, the funds that you have been looking for, wisdom will tell you how, how to get them. In the name of Jesus. Wisdom will speak in your ears. Wisdom will go before you. And you will know exactly, in detailed form, the same God who gave Noah the dimensions of the ark you know, sometimes we think that God only speaks in headlines. He gives detailed instructions too. So you enter into a season where you hear detailed instructions. Go right, stop, turn left. You will hear detailed instruction. You will not be manipulated by darkness. In the name of Jesus. This is your portion. Say with me, Jesus is my wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. All right. Okay. So, um, first, let's begin by welcoming people that are sitting with us. Because most of some of us came late, so we didn't have the opportunity to greet the person beside us. Just greet the person. Because I know that as soon as we close now, you are dashing out the door. Just greet the person beside you. Yes. Tell them you are welcome. God bless you for coming to church today. God bless you for being good company. Amen. And if you are worshiping with us for the first time online, we welcome you. And we thank you for spending your precious time with us. And we hope that you were blessed by the word that you have heard today. Amen. All right, let's get our offerings ready while I run through the announcements as usual. We are still doing our Bible readings, three chapters every day, Psalms, three chapters we're almost done. <laughs> we're almost done. It felt like a long, a long walk, but then we're almost done. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. So if you have backlog, go and catch up because the psalm is not joking. No. That psalm is long. <laughs> it's long, particularly if you haven't, like, you, you did not know how long it was before until you encountered some, some, chap some chapters. You now know that, ah, one chapter has hundred and something verses. Have you ever seen have you seen it before? Have you seen it? Is there, have you been reading your, your Psalms? God bless you. God bless you. The next time, the next cycle we are going, you will be in the Bible reading group. So you'll be clicking. So we know the people that are reading and people that are not reading. Amen. You cannot lie. You're a child of God. The Lord is watching you. Amen. All right. So we are sitting at our three chapters every day. We are still on the Psalms. We are almost done with the Psalms. After that, we'll be crossing into the next book. What's the next book? Proverbs. Yes, so. <laughs> and unfortunately, we are going to wisdom. We are going into a wisdom series by next month. Hallelujah. That's great. So we'll be having it. So we won't miss Bible study as much now. You know, we used to have Bible study before, like interaction, but now we'll not miss it because now there's. We are reading the Bible on our own and we are coming to, you know, interact. Wow, amazing. I'm looking forward to it. Now I'm looking much more. <laughs> looking forward to it much more hallelujah all right so we have um we have our, our worship team rehearsal on saturdays oh sorry on thursdays on thursdays 5 p.m to 7 p.m 
on Thursdays new, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. So if you want to join the music team, just feel free. Join us. There's no, no heavy protocol. Just join the rehearsal. Then we'll see whether you can keep up. That's how we check. We check that. See if you can keep up. Once we say that you cannot keep up, it means that, you know, it's not your destiny for now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. And then we meet for service again at 4 p.m. on Saturdays. Every Saturday. Don't miss it. It has been amazing. This um, light series has been amazing. We're going to Easter service and then we enter wisdom. After light, open your eyes and you enter wisdom. Amazing. It's a good, good combo. Amen. You are not looking forward to it. You, nobody's asking. Project. As if I'm the only one. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that's it. So Easter, we have uh, we are we're having our own service on Holy Saturday. So our Easter service will be on Holy Saturday, which is this coming Saturday. So come, prepare your minds. You can go through the scriptures again, and you can watch uh, Passion of the Christ again. To have a renewed, you know, a renewed perspective, yeah? So, you know that, cause so sometimes when they say happy Easter, people are not so, the, the celebratory spirit is not so much. But that is actually, because if he came and did not go and die and rise, come out of the grave, no problem. Ah, <laughs> destined to eternal, <laughs> eternal turbulence, eternal damnation. Thank you, my sister, that's the word. So... The fact that he came and obeyed through and went to the cross and rose up to set us free is something to celebrate. So we're coming, we're not coming to be, because you know, people just, Easter service, people just come and they're like, you know, they're being sober. <laughs> it's not a service to be sober, it's a service to be rejoicing. So you're coming, so you're not going to watch Passion of the Christ to come sad. You're just coming, you're going to watch to know that Jesus died and rose for your sake. So you ha have no reason to be afraid of even death. Eh? Death cannot, cannot shake you because you know where you are going now. Abi? Yeah. And because of Jesus that we know where we are going. Yeah. So we are coming to celebrate the fact that we know where we are going after this life. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I look forward to seeing all of you on Saturday. Invite someone. Invite someone. Let's come and rejoice in God's presence for what Jesus did for us on the cross. Amen? So if you have your offerings ready, please, let's bring it out. Hard copy. If you want to do a transfer, I'll call out the account numbers after we have prayed. So you can do that transfer. But if you have it, just bring it out. Let's pray. Even if you don't have anything, pray, pray, pray. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. That you have the time to give to God this evening is, is offering. So thank the Lord. Bow your heads and thank the Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We glorify your holy name. Thank you, Father, for what you have done for us. Thank you, Father, for all that you have given unto us. A Father who has given his son, there is nothing that he cannot give us again. So we are not, we are not perturbed, we are not afraid, we are not worried. Even in seasons of lack, it may seem like lack. We are not worried. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise for this that you have blessed us with. We thank you, Lord, for you are the one who gives. You are the one who blesses. And from that which you have given us, we are here to say thank you. So thank you, Father. Thank you for the love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your covering. Thank you, Lord, for your keeping. Thank you, Lord, for your keeping, for your provision every day. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And we pray for those who do not have tangible seed to give this evening. We ask, oh God, that you bless them, that you bless the work of their hands. And for those who are in search of work, that you give them work to do. We give you praise, oh Lord, for their lives. We know and we Thank you in anticipation of the abundance that you are bringing their way. Not just to give to your house, but to give to people around them. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So you can rise up to your feet as we give the offering. Our little assistant has resigned to Children's Church. So... <laughs> All right. 
Hallelujah. Was it a great service today? It was a great service. We thank God. All right, let's just lift our hands and just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Jesus, for the words that you have spoken unto our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for the stirring of our hearts this evening. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing, the blessing of time, the blessing of family, the blessing of, of love around us, relationships. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We do not take it for granted. We thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Intentionally thank God. Intentionally thank him. Just for a few seconds. Intentionally thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We cannot thank you enough. We give you all the gratitude, all the things from the depths of our heart. We are grateful, oh Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Look to the person to your right or your left and tell them, surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a pleasant week.